Hello, Omar. My name's Ben. Do you mind if I examine you? No. Expose the lower limbs as much as possible with regard to the patient's comfort and dignity. Look for asymmetry or deformities proximally and distally. Examine for wasting, hypertrophy, fasciculation and involuntary movements. Sometimes fasciculation is elicited by flicking the skin over a wasted muscle. just want you to let your legs go floppy. Examine the tone in the lower limb, first by rolling or rotating it from side to side, then by briskly lifting the knee to a flexed position. Tone can be increased or decreased, and there are various patterns of increased tone, such as spasticity and rigidity. Just relax again. Test for clonus at the knee joint, with the patient relaxed and the knee extended. With your thumb and forefinger, sharply push the patella towards the foot. Clonus is a rhythmic series of contractions evoked by a sudden stretch of the muscle. A few beats of clonus is normal in healthy individuals. To elicit ankle clonus, support the patient's leg with both knee and ankle at 90 degrees. Briskly dorsiflex and evert the foot, sustaining the pressure. Next, we test the deep tendon reflexes. Just let the leg go floppy over my arm. The patient should be relaxed and comfortable. Anxiety or pain can increase the response. For this reason, we test the reflexes after tone but before power in the examination sequence. The knee jerk tests the L3 and L4 nerve roots. Compare both sides. This time I want you to clasp your hands together. Grip when I say grip, but not before. Use reinforcement if a reflex appears to be absent. Grip. When testing the lower limb reflexes, ask the patient to Relax. interlock the fingers and pull one hand against the other. Grip. This is the Gendrasic maneuver. The patient should relax between repeated attempts. Now, we test the ankle jerk reflexes. They use the S1 nerve root. This is a method to use with a recumbent patient. Next, the plantar response, a superficial reflex. Run a blunt object along the lateral border of the sole of the foot towards the little toe. Just going to run this stick up the sole of your foot. The normal response is flexion of the great toe and of the other toes. Next, systematically test power in the muscle groups of the lower limb. Now lift your right leg straight up off the bed. This shows the ability of hip flexors and knee extensors to overcome gravity. And the same with the left leg. Use the MRC scale from 0 to 5 to grade power. Test the same groups in isometric contraction against resistance. And relax. And the same on the left side. Push up. The hip flexors. And relax. And the knee extensors. Now keep your legs straight as I try to bend it. Always compare sides. Remember that strength can vary greatly with age and occupation. And the same on the left side. Try to keep it straight. Now bend the leg up. And try to pull your heel towards your bottom as hard as you can. This is testing power in the knee flexors. Relax. Make sure that, whenever possible, you use the same hand, posture and mechanical advantage to apply the force in order to make valid comparison. Now point your toes up towards the ceiling and hold them there as I try to push them down. Testing the ankle dorsiflexors and toe extensors. The same on the left side. And don't let me push them towards you. Plantar flexion at the ankle and toe flexion. Take care that you don't hurt the patient by inadvertently leaning on them or squeezing them with your other hand. Now I want you to run your heel down your shin like this. This is a test of muscular coordination called the heel-shin test. It is abnormal if the heel wavers away from the line of the shin due to cerebellar ataxia. Lastly, the abdominal reflexes. Just pull your vest up for me, please. Just going to run a stick across your tummy. Use an orange stick and stroke briskly but lightly in a medial direction across each quadrant of the abdomen. 
the normal response is contraction of underlying muscle with movement of the umbilicus.